It's election season. We're going all in for President Trump. The MAGA hat does not come off. It's the only chance that we have to save our country. And we're officially beginning the HOC election coverage series, which means that we're going to start going through the whole list of videos that I brainstormed for you guys. Everything from what happens if Joe Biden wins to exposing their plan to steal the election. Everything that you need to know. But I figured that we would start by debunking this ridiculous sign. I've been seeing this sign everywhere. I'm sure that you probably have as well. And it makes a series of claims that are designed not only to virtue signal, but to pander to the lowest common denominator in society. Isn't it great that we all get to vote? So we will go over why this sign is a scam, why the people who display it are uneducated, and why the sign itself is completely absurd. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Firstly, I would like to give a very warm welcome to everyone who is new here. We've been growing a lot recently, so everyone be sure to welcome the new viewers in the comments. Very simply put, we believe in American exceptionalism. We believe that America should be put first. We believe that the American family should be put first. And we believe that the best way to begin to accomplish those things is to better ourselves, to make ourselves more disciplined. So... You know, that's what we're about, uh, but we're happy to have you here. But anyways, we will get onto this yard sign now. We first have to point out how much of a privilege it actually is to be able to display a political yard sign in 2020, like how much of a privilege it is to be able to express your beliefs, not have your sign stolen, not have your car keyed, not have a passive aggressive post written about you on nextdoor.com. Really, it is a great privilege that they have. And the reason that they have it is because they're actually willing to go out of their way to silence or even harm you for disagreeing with them. And the reason for that, more broadly speaking, is because liberalism is rooted in selfishness. To refuse to acknowledge any ideas other than your own as legitimate or worthy of respect is a symptom of selfishness. And this should come as no surprise to us. Like when you study the philosophy of liberalism, you'll find that it is about liberating the individual from everything, from, from culture, from neighborhoods, from language, from morality, religion, literally everything until he's this absolutely autonomous unit who's only concerned with himself. And resultantly, people who are attracted to this philosophy tend to be pretty selfish. And that should not surprise us. Remember, these are the people who say things like, stop having kids. Having kids is terrorism. I hate people. We need a new plague. Kill all the men. Kill all the Trump supporters. But then the also evangelically support wearing masks, support these narratives. What it's really about, they don't care about humanity. They don't care about me or you simply because we're human beings. No, really what they care about is just feeding their own egos by presenting themselves as virtuous with virtue being defined by whatever the screen people are telling them on that day. That's what it's all about, like, especially when they display these signs in the front yards. And what's funny, too, is the people who are making and selling these signs, they don't seem to be genuinely concerned with the cause. Because if you go to the website, which is called Signs of Justice, cringe, they're selling them for $10 each. But you have to order a minimum of 10 So you have to spend at least $100 on signs that probably cost $2 to make. And then it's another $150 per sign if you want the metal stakes included, which probably cost $0.50 cents to make, right? So somebody's making absolute bank off allowing liberals to feel good about themselves in their all-white neighborhoods. So we'll go through the sign now. It makes seven claims which supposedly reflect the beliefs of the household. And you'll notice, too, with all of them, they're bumper stickers. They don't have any nuance to them at all. They are designed to frame these issues not as political issues, but moral issues, and to communicate that this house is on the right side of history. But the problem is that they're all basically political issues because politics is literally the science of how we should structure society. So if you're making any claim or suggestion about the concerns of the society, you know, technically speaking, that's a political claim. But they don't want to frame it that way. They would prefer to frame these issues as moral issues because it allows them to simultaneously avoid debate and secrete a little dopamine, feel good about themselves. So the first thing that it says is, we believe black lives matter. Okay. I do too, in that I believe black lives matter, just like the lives of other people, but I do not believe black lives matter. I do not believe the movement. The movement was built upon lies. Virtually every claim made by black lives matter is a lie. Virtually every example which they cite as evidence of racism is a lie. I did two very in-depth videos on this topic, which I will link in the description. I think I'll actually do that uh, with a lot of these claims so that the new people can go back and watch some of the older content because it's all good. I'm humble, but it's all good. Uh, but this sign, it just proves the point that Black Lives Matter is nothing more than a brilliant rhetorical strategy from a radically left, openly racist, domestic terrorist organization because they can do literally whatever they want, whether that's burning cities down, inspiring the murder of white people, the murder of police officers, literally whatever they want. And if you criticize them, well, what is it? Do you not think that Black Lives Matter? It's a great strategy. If you criticize them, they can just hide behind the name and the NPCs will fall in line. 
But anyways, the next one might actually be my favorite. Uh, the next one says simply that no human is illegal. And what that means is that you can immigrate to their property and demand housing, education, food, and health care, and they will be more than happy to give it to you since it's impossible to trespass since no human being is illegal because borders are just made up lines. But the problem with that is that it's trying to disprove something within a framework that requires the existence of the concept that allows it to exist. And what I mean by that is saying no human is illegal is an acknowledgement of the fact that certain things are legal and other things are not legal. And those are categorized by the government of our civilization. And since the government has the power to enforce the laws, uh, it really doesn't matter what you personally think. The government is going to theoretically enforce the laws of the society. So you can whine all you want, but at the end of the day, the government has power and you don't, which means that illegally crossing the border into our country or even into any country on the planet really uh, is not a good idea because what you're doing is illegal as defined by the people and resultantly the government of that country. And since they have the power, they can decide that. If you wanted to make a slightly better argument, you could say, well, you know, there's no really such thing as legal or illegal. We're all equal, so everything's just arbitrary. That would actually be a more logically consistent argument to make. But again, when legality and civility are erased, all that's left is power. And if the power says that you're not allowed in, then you're not allowed in. And at that point, you have no one to complain to except yourself, maybe your cats, God, assuming you believe in him. So yes, human beings can be illegal if they are somewhere that they're not legally permitted to be. And if you disagree with this, I'll see you at dinner tomorrow. You know, I'm going to set up the HOC compound on your property, in your backyard, because no human being is illegal. I also, I did a video debunking all these immigration arguments that they like to make. That's in the description too. So anyways, next one is love is love. And this is supposed to mean that there's no difference between types of relationships. They're all the same because love is just love. And what frustrates me the most about this one is that these people think that all of a sudden, everyone just woke up one morning and was like, wait a minute, they just love each other? Well, yeah, go for it, which is not at all what happened because LGBT rights are a political issue. And like all political issues, they are advanced through brute strategy and willpower, which is exactly what happened with this. This plan was laid out in the 1980s and 1990s by organizations such as the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. They wrote about this in a book released in 1989 titled After the Ball, How America Will Conquer Its Fear and Hatred of Gays in the 1990s. They said that in any campaign to win over the public, gays must be portrayed as victims in need of protection so that straights will be inclined by reflex to adopt the role of the protector. They said that the public should be persuaded that gays are victims of circumstance, that they no more choose their sexual orientation than they did height, skin color, talents, etc., and that they should be portrayed as the victims of prejudice in society. I mean, like, look at the title of the book. It pretends that Americans hated gay people. We were afraid of them. No, no. But we thought that it would be a slippery slope, and we were correct. And now, a couple decades later, your son is learning to question his gender identity in his kindergarten class. And leftists always get really triggered by this. They're like, um, no, well, that's just a conspiracy theory. No, no, not a theory. It's all publicly available information. I would be happy to educate you on why you believe what you believe, but I'm not going to apologize to you for uh, resisting the propaganda campaign pain because I have higher impulse control than you do. They, even, they infiltrated the American Psychiatric Association because they thought that changing the way that it regarded homosexuality through political pressuring would make it easier to change the way that it was regarded by the public. And they were correct. The public perception on same-sex marriage has literally inverted in the last few decades. And it was because of a very successful political strategy by these activists. Not because, oh, we're just smarter now. We're just more inclusive now. No, no. It's because they capitalized on how stupid and predisposed to virtue signaling you are. So congratulations. But uh, to address the sign directly, love is love. That's not true. There are different types of love. And the love between a man and a woman is unique because it can create life. That's the bottom line. That's why we elevate it to the status of marriage. And whether you look at it from a religious perspective, uh, where man and woman are to become unified through love and to create life, or you know, a more evolutionary uh, Rick and Morty, oh, well, love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed, burp type perspective, you know, love, romantic love, is rooted in the potential to create human life. And metaphysically speaking, love is an action. It's about commitment. If you love someone, it means that you give everything that you have to that person, all your effort, and that requires commitment to that person because if you're not committed to that person, if there's other people, that means that you're not giving that one person all of your effort because you're you know, balancing it out, you're distributing it. Um, and I'm not saying that non-straight relationships don't have that. However, I will point out that the average length of a gay relationship is less than two years, that 50% of gay relationships are open or non-monogamous, and that casual hookups are a staple of gay culture. What's a good example of gay culture? San Francisco in the 1980s, maybe? Half the gay men in San Francisco during the 1980s had over 500 sexual partners. Something important to note. The point being that we have no ill will towards gay people. We're not afraid of them. We don't hate them, but we do acknowledge that the love between a man and a woman is unique. And it is that relationship that creates life and families, the stability and preservation of which are literally the backbone of Western civilization. That's all. 
The next one is women's rights are human rights. There's no such thing as women's rights. We have rights as human beings. You do not get exclusive rights simply because you are a woman. And to also campaign this while your coalition is trying to erase what it means to be a woman, like both biologically and philosophically, it's a pretty audacious move. But what this really means is I have a right to an abortion. That's not true. Roe v. Wade was one of the most poorly adjudicated cases in the history of the Supreme Court. They decided that a woman has a right to an abortion because of an implied right to privacy, which is also not written in the Constitution. But I also find it interesting that the left makes it their greatest call to action, that these feminists have convinced generations of women that they are most empowered by liberating themselves from the defining characteristic of their womanhood, which is their ability to give birth. Truly very sad. Maybe maybe that's why they're all taking antidepressants. Hey, um, stay at home. Play music, read books, write poetry, create art, decorate, make food, do whatever you want, but would you please just be the mother of my children? I'll pay for everything. Just run the vacuum once a week. If you wouldn't mind making dinner too, that'd be epic. Is that okay? Would you mind letting me cherish you for the rest of your life? Would that be too much to ask? Take a break from the spreadsheets, maybe, I don't know, raise the next generation? No, stop oppressing me! Working for a corporation and going home to play with my cats is empowering. Working for my family is oppressive. And I know that because corporate media told me so. What a shame. That's the problem, boys. They're not mad at you. They're mad at their fathers. Strong men will cure feminism in less than two generations. If you want your son to be able to play video games without getting bitched at for, well, how do they portray the women? You have to stop watching porn. Got to start lifting weights and figure out a few epic goals. Start working towards them. Because if men become masculine again, women will become feminine again. Well, why can't they just become feminine first? See, that, that's the estrogen talking. Get it together, big guy. We need you. But anyways, uh, the next one is science is real. Science is real, man. I like NASA. Look at my NASA clothes. Shut up, nerd. Science is fake. Your interest in science is fake because you think it makes you look smart. You know how I know you're not smart? You spent at least $100 to let your neighbors know that you don't think lynching black people is a good idea. Like people were jogging by before with no clue as to the opinion of your household on lynching black people. But now, after you paid the $100 woke tax, they're like, good for them. Good for them. Science is fake and lobbied for. When you believe in science, you're not reading primary source material. You're not analyzing methodology. You're listening to the screen people tell you, well, science says this, and I have a study that says this, and you're like, okay, I guess it does. And it's funny because the left is very anti-religion, specifically anti-Christianity, but since man is fundamentally a religious creature, they're just replacing God with other ways of explaining the universe. In this case, science, AKA screen people, right? Unfortunately, and I wish this weren't the case, but science is totally corrupted. I could build a baking soda volcano with stolen ingredients, and it would have more integrity than the information that were being presented by the media. And the reason for that is that these people have agendas. So they write a grant to a group of lab coats, and they say, hey, see if you can vaguely prove this conclusion. And that's what happens. And it's always done so incompetently with regards to good data, but it doesn't matter. It still gets published, and it still gets cited. So anyways, next one is water is life, which is just a better way of branding the Green New Deal, uh, which is epic, because it's like, hey, people need water, right? Yeah. Now, what if we banned air travel and gave people money for just not being willing to work? No one disagrees that water is important, but it's important to note that some of the greatest ecological disasters specifically pertaining to water came from socialist countries. Not that this sign is in favor of socialism explicitly, but I think we all know the conclusion of these ideas. So uh, the last one is injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And I guess this is true, but the problem is that what they believe to be injustice isn't actually injustice, but rather justice that is inconvenient to their narrative. The way that we understand justice is basically protection of our God-given rights, whereas their understanding of justice is basically enforced equality. And those two cannot coexist, which is why they play aggressively, they play militantly, and they play for keeps, which is why it's safe for them to put out a sign like this. But it's not safe for you to put out a sign that just supports President Trump, which is okay because it means that when you do put out that sign, you're communicating more than just your voting intention, but also that you're courageous. Whereas when you put out one of these signs, you're sending a totally different message. Not, I'm a good person, but rather, I don't have an internal monologue. I believe what the screen people tell me. I'm a sheep and I'm a useful idiot. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, be nice to the new viewers, we love our viewers, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, share it with a friend. You gotta share it with a friend. Wait a minute. Oh, what's that? I'm getting a phone call. Hello? President Trump? You said you weren't gonna call me for another hour. That's okay, I, I know that your, your tasks are significantly more important than my tasks, so I'm not inconvenienced by this. Oh, what's that? You want the American people to share this video with a friend? Do you want to tell them that yourself? Hello, it is me, President Trump. Many people are saying that John Doyle is 
one of the greatest, frankly, even the greatest online political commentators of our generation. Totally true. It's totally true. He's doing tremendous work with heck off commie. They say heck off to the commies. Uh, I might go ahead and say f*** off commies, but, you know, different time. I understand that we have to be politically correct on YouTube, on big tech. We don't like big tech. They're doing terrible things. This is a total disaster. We're going to repeal Section 230 and so that uh, John here can continue to make content. People are saying that it's epic. People are saying that it's totally awesome. And he's doing a great job. So we love John Doyle, don't we, folks? We love John Doyle. I- Thank you, President Trump, for this epic endorsement. And you know what? I reciprocate that. I endorse you. Should I do that right now? John Doyle endorses President Trump. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a minute. I was going to run squads with him later in Fortnite, talking about Baron. Yeah. That dude's tall, bro. You guys got strong genes. Can I... No, yeah. Like, if I could get Trump jeans, that'd be epic. Imagine, like, a Doyle-Trump crossover. You should tell Ivanka to dump that New York liberal. Yeah, I can make her Christian again. I'm well-versed in apologetics. It's gonna be epic. Okay, we'll work on that later. Keep doing keep doing what you're doing, big guy. Okay, all right. Love you, too. Bye. Sorry, had to take a phone call from President Trump one day. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.